Jansen Fletcher Hart, you have been found guilty of the charges brought by this court, and it is now my duty to pass sentence. You are an habitual troublemaker who has shown little respect or regard for colony officers. We therefore commit you to the maximum term allowed for these offences. You will go to Folly Prison for five years. Come on, fellas, just let me go! Promise I won't say a word. No talking. Okay. So, who are you putting me in with? Come on, have a heart! All right. Next step. Inside? Well, what about a bribe? Hey! Hey! Where's visiting? August, I think you'll find. Hi. I'm Jansen Hart. Hello, I'm the doctor. Whoa! Stop right there. If you're going to say Dr. John Smith, I'm going to be starstruck. Biggest crook on folly. Yes, I've gathered that someone of that name has a certain reputation here. The thing is, I'm innocent. <laughs> of course you are. You, me, and every other con in the prison. Mind if I take the top bunk? Parole board hearing for prisoner Jansen Hart. Mr. Hart, you've been here a week. Why should we parole you? I left the gas on at home. <laughs> Listen, Governor Chaplin, I'd like to take this opportunity to say I'm sorry. I was only kidding when I said what I said about your warts, which, you know, you don't have, obviously. Parole refused. Ten days solitary. Take him away. Shush! Next. Ah, oh, yes. Prisoner Jabres. Whatever. Parole refused. Next. Oh. Dr. John Smith. Again, really, just the doctor. Uncooperative. Dr. Smith, do you still maintain that Folly Prison is going to explode? Yes, I'm afraid so. Shortly after noon on the 10th of May next year. You really must get everyone out before then. Alternatively, you could stop making these threats to blow the prison up. Which, I might remind you, are what got you two years' detention in the first place. I am not making threats. I've explained time and time again. I picked up a trace of the explosion in my TARDIS. Well, and... it must have been a really long fuse. Parole refused. Twenty days solitary. Please, talk to my friend Nessa. She knows all about it. I must admit, I'm terribly worried about her. Out of my way, please! I'm a desperate criminal! Out of my way! Ah! Ow! 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 Let me through. I said, let me through! Oh, at last, a policeman. You took your time. All right, everyone, show's over. Get back to your stalls. Now, miss, that's all this ruckus. I'm a thief. Will you put me in handcuffs, please? I'm not a policeman. I'm a prison officer. Guard Dask. Even better. You can take me straight to jail. That's not how it works, miss. You must arrest me. I stole a bracelet from the jeweller's stall. What bracelet? This bracelet. Oh. I had it in my hand just now. It must have gone flying when I did. No bracelet, no crime. Here, let me help you up, miss. Uh... Uh, Nissa. My name's Nissa. You wouldn't make much of a foster. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you're an orphan? No. Well, yes. I mean, the Fosters were the police on my world. Please, help me look for that bracelet. Oh, excuse me, miss, but that jeweller's packing up his stall. Dare say most of his wares were stolen in the first place. Don't say you're going to arrest him. It's my duty. Look after yourself, miss. You don't look like the sort to end up in jail. Oh, seemingly not. Excuse me. Can I have a word, please? Excuse me.
18 days, or is it 20? Doctor! <sighs> Jensen. Hey, Doctor! What is it? Can't sleep, you? Uh, forgive me, Jensen, it's just I'm, I'm trying rather hard to concentrate. What on? A terribly tricky temporal conundrum. I picked up a future echo of an explosion at the prison in my TARDIS a whole year before it's going to happen. <sighs> Now, obviously, I can account for an 18 or 20 day time contusion through natural solar system distortion, but yeah, still. That's what hobbling Pete next door was going off his head. Hobbling Pete? Not everyone can handle it in solitary. You and me, we're used to being on our own, but Pete. Pete's cracking. Thing is, he was a traveller, used to meeting people all over. It's cruel doing this to him. Well. Steady at bat, that's a ticket. Listen, Jansen, I, I have a friend outside Nyssa, and. He's good. Only a couple more months till August. The thought of seeing him will give you something to look forward to. Him? Uh, yes, yes, I suppose it will. Will you pack it in, Pete? Dask here. Intruder sighted. Repeat, intruder sighted. Stop right there! Hands where I can see them! You again! Dask, I thought you guarded the prison. I'm underpaid. I do security work on my nights off. What are you doing here, miss? Well, as you can see, I'm breaking into this warehouse. You've caught me, so you must call the police to take me to prison. <laughs> Sorry, miss. Of all the 132 warehouses in this industrial estate, you pick the one that's empty. What? Take a look. Nissa, is this a cry for help? Nissa, at last it's so good to see you. This is Nissa. I thought. Thought what? Nissa, Jansen Hart, Jansen Hart, Nissa. Uh, Jansen, could you give us a moment? Yeah, I'll get ya. <laughs> nice to meet you, Nissa. And you. <laughs> Excuse me, God Dask. He, he's saying he's got no visitors. He's very young. His parents live three whole systems away. It'll take them a year to get here. Then he shouldn't have been expecting them, should he? Come on, Jeb Breath. Back to the cell block. Hey! That, that's... No one's come for me either. I'll be his visitor. I, sh I shouldn't really. Please, Nathan. Oh, all right. Just this once. Thank you. Nathan. Oh, yes. I met Mr. Dask on the... Outside. Oh, sorry. I'm on nights. You're working? Yes, Mr. Das... Nathan. He's been ever so good. He helped me get a temporary job at the university hospital. Lab assistant. Well, so long as you're keeping busy. I'm really rather enjoying it. Learning a lot, too. Michael is teaching me all about telebiogenesis. Michael? Sorry, one of the junior doctors. Do you like my hair down like this? Down like what? Oh, never mind. So, what have you been up to? Oh, you know, I've organised the prison library according to the Dewey system. Been in the kitchens, improving the nutritional value of the prison food. Set up night classes in small spaceship maintenance. Eighteen prisoners have qualified for parole since I took up counselling. Quite pleased with that. I've started a 2020 cricket tournament. Oh, and I've written the F wing Christmas panto. Well, that all sounds wonderful. Except I did all that on the first morning. All right, everyone, just being told visiting hours off. Next one in December. <laughs> We've not had an hour, nothing like Sorry, it. Sorry, something to do with the TV crew. Governor Chapman says you can walk your visitors through the yard back to the force field. Excuse me, what's a TV crew doing here? Uh, I don't know. you find out on TV. Come on, Doctor. We can talk some more on the way. OK, camera rolling and cue. Are we running? Good. I'm Noreen Chaplin, and I've been the governor here at Folly Prison for five years now. The inmates will tell you I've been fair, but firm with it. The reason I'm standing as a candidate in next year's presidential election is, well, I believe a firm hand is what our colony needs right now. Nice and quiet, single file, straight to the force field. There's Governor Chaplin. Why is she being interviewed? Haven't you heard? She's standing for president. 
I've invited the cameras into my prison today because I want everyone on Folly to know I practice what I preach. I want to build a border around our colony as unbreakable as the force field around the perimeter of my prison. Uh, one moment. I think it's about to be switched off. Supply trucks coming through. Hold up, everyone! Stop! Why? Supply convoy early! Force field's down! Force field's what? Come, come on, guys! You heard the man! What are we gonna do about it? No, please, you mustn't! Yes, that is unfortunate. It seems several of the inmates have chosen this moment to try to escape. But now that the supply convoy is safely through, it really isn't a problem. Fieldgate, power back on. Now, please. Idiots! They didn't stand a chance! Nathan! Help us with the injured! Nathan! I'm... Yes. Yes, of course. The electrical surgeon amputated this man's foot. We need a cauterizing kit. I'll, I'll get the medics. Jansen, where's Jansen? It's all right, Doctor. We made it! Me and Hoblin, Pete, we made it! Jansen, please, stop! Catch you later, Doctor. Come on, please. Hobble, hobble for your life. Two prisoners made it through, you think? No, 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 no. You see, beyond the electrical barrier, there's a second force field. It's new technology. Personal time is literally slowed down inside the force field. One minute's walk takes a week's life off you. Fieldgate, we have a breach. Two prisoners in the time field. Go and collect them. No hurry. Obviously, the prisoners will suffer some ill effects. Exhaustion, dehydration, starvation. But that's a small price to pay for security. And when I'm your president... Governor Chapman, would you care to tell the people at home how it was you purposefully choreographed that disgraceful display? Guards! Take Dr. Smith to solitary. You might also want to warn them about the explosion. The explosion that's going to devastate this. Oh! oh, as I was saying, when I'm your president, the colony borders will be protected by the same defenses. Simple, effective, strong. Prisoner Smith will stand. Desk, if this is another cell inspection, I can assure you there's absolutely no need... Good afternoon, Doctor. Ah, Governor Chaplin. I confess I've lost track of time, rather, which is a new and not very pleasant experience, but isn't my parole hearing long overdue? This is your parole hearing, Doctor. Desk, wait outside. Ma'am. No, about this time field of yours. Yes, the time field. You'll be pleased to hear that I've made a few alterations. Good, good. It no longer takes a week of your life to cross it. It takes a year. A year? Stretching a time field that thin, you know that's terribly dangerous. Is it? I take it you still claim there's going to be some sort of explosion here? You've got six months. Start planning an evacuation, please. Elections in six months. I'll be busy. Once again, you're not listening. At... Doctor. You call me doctor, just doctor. You're not Dr. John Smith, are you? At last! Dr. John Smith doesn't exist. It's a catch-all name for every unidentified criminal offender on folly. So when you turned up here claiming to be that very man... I didn't stand a chance. Yes, I see that now. I'm here to offer you a deal, Doctor. I can have you released tomorrow. Good. What's the catch? I don't know why, but people listen to you, Doctor. The guards, the prisoners, the kitchen staff, they like you. I can't seem to make them like me. I can't imagine why. It's the same with my campaign. People want me to clean up this colony. I know they do. It's just they start getting squeamish when I tell them how it needs to be done. But you, Doctor, you've got the common touch. 
You know what it is that people need to hear. You know how to win their confidence. Are you offering me a job? In a purely unofficial capacity, of course. In which case, might I be placed in charge of evacuating the prison shortly before noon on the morning of May the 10th? Not this again. You don't see it, do you, Doctor? I believe you. You do? So I've decided this explosion of yours can be my big election day stunt. What? Disaster at the prison, terrible casualties, and me in the middle of it all, bravely battling on, restoring discipline, punishing the guilty. But this is madness. On the contrary, it's a clincher. Guard, guard. Right now, I only make the rules in the prison, but soon I'll make them for the whole planet, the whole system. Should I applaud now? Parole refused. Six months solitary. Lock him up, Dusk. You heard her, Dusk. Doctor, I have a message from Jansen. He's just back from the university hospital. Wants me to warn you that someone called Michael is Foxy. Foxy says you want to be careful, Doctor. They never wait. <sighs> Close the door behind your desk. He shouldn't have played truant, but it was quadruple maths. He didn't think anyone would notice. What? Lisa, over here. Jansen, where's the doctor? Uh, aren't you pleased to see me? Yes, yes, of course. It's just that I need to see him. Yeah, well, he's still in solitary. Four months now, it's a record. We're running a book on how long the governor will keep him in there. Is he all right? I guess. He's singing a lot. Most days you can hear him from the exercise yard. We've been playing cricket, like he taught us, you know, to keep his spirits up. Keep on telling your breath, swallowing a ball and regurgitating it doesn't count as a catch. Oh, yes. Cricket. Do you have, um, bales? If I had bales, do you think I'd still be in here? Sorry, let's talk about you instead. I'd rather not. Michael, right? He's all not well in paradise. The wedding was very elaborate. Oh. Yes, they seem very happy together. Ah. Oh. Still, I finish at the hospital in a few weeks' time. Listen, Lisa, I won't be in here forever. And when I get out, I could use a partner who's smart. Partner? What do you say? Your brain's my beauty. We could be the next Bonnie and Clyde. Doctor, you... Whoa! Whoa. Oh, I've got ya! I've got ya! <laughs> oh, thanks, Jansen. Just a little shaky on my legs. What's all this? You're an hero, Doctor! Longest single turn in Folly Solitary ever recorded. Even the guards have come out into the yard. Everybody, the doctor's not used to the daylight or you lot shouting, so let's just calm it down now. What day is it, Jensen? Uh, Monday. Spare the legs a few words, yeah? There'll be a riot if you don't. Yes, yes, later. The date, Jensen. Well, 10th of May, Doctor. Election day. Oh, no. Please, Governor Chaplin, I still don't understand exactly why it is I've been arrested. I have the details here. Ah, yes. Nessa Tracken, remanded without bail on charges of criminal conspiracy. What conspiracy? Allow me to explain. It's prison policy to record all visits, just to ensure nothing untoward is going on. But I've done nothing untoward. The 15th of March recording says otherwise. Computer, play. Listen, listen. I won't be in here forever. And when I get out, I can use a partner who's smart. Partner? What do you say? Your brain's my beauty. We can be the next Bonnie and Clyde. Computer, stop. Compelling evidence, don't you think? I don't know this Bonnie and Clyde. Guard! Ma'am? Nissa, you finally did it. So it seems. At least I get to see the doctor. Not if I send you to H-Block. Dusk, we're taking this prisoner down. Come on, doctor, say something. I have to get out of here. Tell me something I don't know. But first, Jansen, we need to get everyone as close to the prison perimeter as possible, just in case. 
Hello, it's nice to be back in the yard. I'm, I'm seeing, what is it, uh, 1,709 prisoners and 17 guards. You counted. Yes, you? I think that's right. Everyone, we're going to play cricket. 863 aside cricket. Everyone to my left, you're Australia. Everyone to my right, you're England. Come on, form up. Enjoying yourself, Doctor? Governor Chaplin, I'm going to ask you one last time. Evacuate the prison before... Yes, sir. Hello, Doctor. I thought I couldn't get arrested round here, but it seems I was wrong. Well, enjoy your association time, you two. I'm afraid I'm due at my count. Please, we have to talk. Oh, Doctor, you should know by now. I'm not about speeches, I'm about action. Dusk, escort me to the field gate. Ma'am. It's almost noon, Doctor. I know. I wish I knew exactly what it is she's planning, a bomb of some kind, perhaps. I don't know. You don't think it's possible you're mistaken about the explosion? I saw the temporal trace. It was perfectly clear. What's that noise? It's only Jabrev. No, not that. Up in the sky. Engines. Yeah, Jabrev's done his time. His folks are coming to collect it. Wait a moment. Oh, that's it! You mean the Jabrevs are going to attack the prison? Oh, I dare say that's what Governor Chaplin is hoping everyone will think. Jabrev's starship engines use elliptical warp drive technology. I don't understand. Perfectly safe under normal circumstances, but in a time field, the warp engines will go into spasm and, well, <laughs> boom! And Chaplin knows this? Don't you see, Miss? I gave her all the information she needed. She'd have observed months ago that the explosion I detected coincided exactly with the scheduled time of the arrival of Jabrev's parents. All she had to do was to put two and two together. I even told her how long to stretch out the time field for. It's all right, Jabrev. I've got a plan. You're going to break out of jail? In approximately three and a half minutes. On the contrary, I've got a year. After me, everyone. You heard him, Jansen Jabrev. Come on! Gate! Lower the force fields, I'm coming through. That ship, Governor, it's flying very low. Is it? Field gate! What's taking you? Force fields down, ma'am. Escort me, Dusk. There she goes. Nissa, wish me luck. I have to get into the time field before the electrified barrier powers up again. Doctor, you can't cross the time field. It'll take a year of your life. Blink of an eye to a time lord. It won't work. You'll need a year's supply of food and water, and that's something we don't have right now. No, well, I'll just have to risk it. Hold on, hold on! Your breath? Yeah, I know, but if there was ever a time to cough up, it's now. What's he doing? Regurgitating. Regurgitating what? Good heavens. There you go, Doctor. Fill your pockets. We got cans of fizzy pop, we got chocolate bars. Don't suppose you'll need the magazines. What is all that doing in Jabrev's stomach? Contraband. No wonder the cell inspections never turned up anything illicit. Yeah, turns out there's an upside to having an alien on the wing. Doctor, Chaplin's on the other side. This will have to do. Thank you, Jabrev. Mrs. Jansen, keep everyone on the edge of the yard. Good luck, Doctor. You should get closer. Lisa, what is a time lord exactly? I should do something. Jabrowski, welcome to Polly. This is Governor President Chaplin. You're clear to land. Land? And don't worry about the time field distortion. It's normal on Polly. What's keeping him? Hurry, Doctor! Hurry! I am hurrying. Camera crews! Where are my camera crews? There! Look at that! An alien attack craft! Well, an alien attack! This is what I warned you about, Folly! Now it's really happening! All of you at home, if you have not made it out to vote, I urge you, go now! For the sake of our colony! Go! 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 It's gone. The noise. It's gone. What? Field gate. Raise the force fields. Field gate. Come in, please. The force fields are down. He made 
need it! Yeah. Everyone! The force fields are down! Jackson! No! The prisoners! They're breaking out! Dusk! Shoot them! What, all 1,709 of them? Just protect me! Double attack me! In here! Hurry! Doctor! What's he doing in field gate control? No time to debate! In here! Now! Desk, hold the door. Doctor, it was you. You powered down the force fields. It was. But you were on the other side of the time field. I saw you. When did you grow that beard? No time to explain, Governor. Stand over there, please. In the far corner. I can't hold the door, Doctor. You'll have to talk to them. I don't think they're in any mood to listen, Desk. But I have another solution in mind. Whatever it is, do it, Doctor. Do it! As you say, Governor. The time field. It's in here. I've narrowed it to around Governor Chaplin. A nice, secure, weak, wide exclusion zone around her own personal borders. You did that? It is rather basic time technology. Doctor, you here? Jansen and Nissa, there you are. We can't hold them back, Doctor. You're going to have to give her up. The Governor. Tell the crowd they're welcome to try, but as you see, she's spending a little time in solitary. The time field! Ha! That's smart! All right, everyone! There's no getting at Chaplin! Not unless you want even more time inside. Go on! Get out while the getting's good! Reckon I should do the same. Uh, not so sure about that. Come on, Desk! It's not like I won't be back soon enough. Please, Nathan. All right, then. Jansen, you could always go straight, you know. I'll think about it. Honest! Bye, all! Hmm. Yes, sir, we should be off as well. You're not leaving her here, Chaplin. She'll be out of the time field in a week. She'll survive. But she's a tyrant. A tyrant who's gambled her entire reputation on security, but appears to have let 1,709 prisoners loose on the streets of folly. I think her poll ratings may just have taken a bit of a blow. Not to mention her chances of keeping her job. And the escaped prisoners? Yeah, some of them might actually have been guilty. Well, I only hope some of them will have listened to my advice. Then there's the temporal trace. The explosion that never happened? An echo isn't the same as an event. Besides, the explosion could never have happened if I hadn't detected it and warned the governor about it. A paradox. Come on. Yes. Well, I don't suppose the Time Lords will take such a relaxed view. There'll be an inquiry. What do I do? What do I say? If anyone asks, just tell them the notorious criminal Dr. John Smith was responsible. I gather that's how it usually goes here on Folly. What's the matter, Mr. Pinfield? Did you not like the story? Everyone likes my stories. Everyone gets involved. Help me! Behind you! He didn't like my stories. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Have you come to hear some of my stories? I hope you have. They're very good stories. Very good indeed. Almost 
to die for. Welcome to this 25th anniversary DVD. My name's Martin Ashcroft, and I directed Doctor Demonic's Tales of Terror. <laughs> With me is Sir Jack Merivale, actor, and I'm Joanna Burke. Hello, I played Carlotta in The Devil's Whisper, the first of the stories in the film. Um, <laughs> can you can you say your Oh, oh yes, sorry. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm Dr. John Smith, historical advisor on The Devil's Whisper. Great, so that's all of us. So, welcome to the commentary. Here we go. Opening titles here, as you can see. Designed by the legendary Paul Mundell, of course, uh, dead now, sadly. He's a lovely man. Lovely man, yes, absolutely. A lovely, lovely man. Much missed. So, Sir Jack, a lot of people probably won't realise uh, that was you as Dr. Demonic in the opening scene. No, no, they, they probably won't. A lot of makeup there. Yes, a lot of makeup. A <laughs> lot of makeup. <laughs> the idea was that I played a different character in each of the four stories. Which you, you did brilliantly. Oh, thank you. Unrecognisable every time. Of course. <laughs> and that linked in with the whole devil as storyteller thing at the end. No, can we give away the end? Uh, we can, yes, 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 we can. Lovely Laura Price there on props. Such a shame. Uh, some of you may have heard of the so-called Curse of the Devil's Whisper. Actually, it's not really appropriate to go into that now. Tragic. Tragic. Our enigmatic writer, Philip Mungston there. Ah, Jerome. Yes. Quite the ladies' man, mm. our producer. Supposed to be with us today, of course, uh, Jerome, but uh, we're recording this uh, a month too late. <laughs> Hope there are barmaids in heaven. Are you just going to talk about who's dead? Yes, so here we go. Dr. Demonic was a portmanteau film. Basically, one big movie made up of several short ones. Very popular uh, in the 70s. Mainly horror, uh, sometimes comedy, or, or indeed comedy horror, usually horror. Uh, yeah. My first story concerns the village of Beechamwell in Norfolk. To all intents and purposes, Beechamwell looked like an ordinary village. A simple village, a village with no troubles at all. But Beechamwell hid a secret, a dark secret, a terrible secret. Would you like to know this secret? Then I will tell you. Listen, listen carefully. If you listen closely, maybe you can hear the devil's whisper. So, uh, now we're into the first part of the film, The Devil's Whisper. Oh, my good man. Have a drink on me. I ain't staying here, sir. Ah! Strange fellow. I wonder what the matter was. Oh, don't you look young, Sir young John? Man. It was a long time ago. We all look younger. Yes. Yeah. Uh, except you, Dr. Smith. Uh, you don't look a day older. Don't I? No, no, you don't. I mean, literally, not a day. Well, I, I am a doctor. I see, uh, yes. We must talk later. Oh, I, uh, I'm looking for my niece. Uncle! 
Oh, that's um, uh, Nissa, Nissa Traken. Uh, Nissa Traken, yes. Only did the one film. Uh, European, I think. Uh, maybe she went back. She said she was from uh, Tardis. Uh, I think it was. Tardis. Where's that? Romania. Oh, hi. good little actress. Good, good little actress. I wonder what happened to her. You might not believe it, but it's true. And what can I do for you, sir? Would you like a flag? In a yes, so, 1976 we made this. The long summer, wasn't it? Mm. Actually filmed in Beechamwell itself. It's a real village. <laughs> real village in Norfolk. Lovely village. I lived in the area many years. Beautiful part of the country. It's based on a genuine uh, legend. Lots of funny legends uh, from the area. Yes, like the mystery of Red Lodge. <laughs> Do you want to tell us anything about that, uh, John? About the mystery of Red Lodge? About Beechamwell? Ah, um, yes. Well, uh, the story goes that in the mid-19th century, a landlady who'd recently lost her husband in an oh, accident... Well, that, that's me. That's uh, my character. Yes. Uh, the, the story goes that she turned to spiritualism for, for comfort, but that during the course of her explorations, she was possessed by demons, um, demons that used her as a conduit for the possession of others. Uh, most of the village was taken over, and the number of victims grew exponentially. So then what happened? Well... Well, the possessions ended when a visiting professor and his niece... Oh, that's you! Uh, that's Sir Jack. Yes, yes. He, he and his niece reversed the possession and drove the demons away, rescuing all the villagers. And basically, that's it. Nonsense. Well, it is a legend. So, how much of that is actual historical fact? Fact is difficult to define, isn't it? Well, you must have some idea. I do, but... How much? I was merely All of it. Surprised. What? Obviously, there's been some corruption in the telling. <laughs> You're suggesting demons are real? Not as such, no. Then this landlady was, what, mentally unstable? No, oh, explains why I was cast. Not exactly. It's complicated. Well, since none of us were there at the time, it's all rather academic, isn't it? Yes. Oh, lovely bit of design there. I think I've got the same wallpaper. Actually, I, I, I might have nicked it from the set. <coughs> Probably uh, shouldn't have mentioned that, really. really Building up to the first of the big that. sacrifice scenes now. Some of the props and costumes in this sequence are totally authentic. They're from Beechamwell itself. Uh, they're supposed to have been used in the actual events. No! No, don't hurt me! Don't hurt me! Place him in front of the shield. That plate, uh, shield thing, whatever it is, uh, the circular what's it with all the, the odd symbols on it, that's authentic. But they can't be. Ah, oh, actually, it's not, is it? <laughs> the original was authentic, but the, this is the reshoot. We're not going to talk about that, are we? Well, we've got to. It's famous. <laughs> I've worked on a great number of films over the years. There are always problems. Quite severe problems, Jack. <laughs> Just because it's a horror movie, people start banding about the word curse willy-nilly. Uh, it's sort of understandable, given all the accidents. And, you know, uh, Laura. I thought we weren't going to talk about her. What happened with Laura was tragic, yes. But not supernatural. There was nothing otherworldly going on. You saw it with your own eyes, and yet you're still in denial. The missing scene. Explain that. The first sacrifice sequence was a reshoot from a day when an entire night's filming vanished. All the props, script pages, footage gone. We were shooting the possession scene uh, you've just seen. We were doing Sir Jack's coverage later. We'd been going on a, a, an hour or so, just getting ready to hit the whole big chanting bit, uh, and then, well, then it, it, it's a blank. Don't know what happened. Suddenly it, it's three hours later and everything's gone. No one remembered a thing. I think it was aliens. Oh, good grief. There have been various tests over the years, investigations. None of them turned up what happened. Just another one of those unsolved mysteries. So 
Sir Jack wasn't on the set. No. Stay to the main room. That's a nice dress. And leave quickly. Why? Just saying. Just saying. Big action sequence coming up here. The runaway carriage bit. <laughs> Always a tricky thing to film, action. Obviously, uh, for the most part, I let Matt, our second unit director, uh, do the exteriors. The carriage going through the wood. Most of it was in studio, though. Yes, yes. We used a technique called a back projection, so we could integrate the footage from the studio with the scenes shot outside. You see, uh, that's the studio, you, you and Nissa. The view through the, the windows, back projection. Uh, that's on film. Studio again. How are you getting the rocking motion? Stage hands moving a rig. Oh. And that's back on location. Gareth Hampton, our stunt driver there, lovely man, uh, went to his wedding uh, the other week. <laughs> lovely service. You often did action sequences, didn't you, Sir Jack? Uh, when required. One of the things with doing a lot of horror films, lots of action, lots of makeup. Sir Jack and indeed uh, Joanna were already on board when I joined the project. Have to say, I, I couldn't have been happier. Oh, thank you. There's a real weight you gain from actors of quality and uh, iconic actors, even more so. A sort of history, a dignity. Ah, with felicity, your life depends on it. Oh, <laughs> you're just about to go into the mud here. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Six takes, that was. Seven. Was it? Yes. Great heavens. But why doesn't he stop it? Is he totally insane? That was at the seaside at Southworld, that uh, precipice. Lovely town. Know it well. That poor, poor man. I wonder what the devil got into him. And all our luggage. Gone. Not the best dialogue in the world, has to be said. Fairly functional. Did any of you uh, no, ever meet the writer, Philip Mungston? Uh, I, don't, I don't remember. No. I didn't. Bit of a recluse, by all accounts. Odd choice, uh, the script. Jerome brought it along at the last minute. Very keen. Don't know why. Quite insistent. I'm happy with the end result, obviously. Yes, it's good, isn't it? It's very good, very good. Yeah. But uh, still, mm, odd choice. Odd choice. Plot doesn't really make sense. We'd planned on making a few changes, but our, our script supervisor had a bit of an accident. Uh, a bit late in the day. Had to go as written. See? She's very good, isn't she? Nissa Traken. Yeah. Very good, very, mm. very good. Does uh, so much with just her face. I mean, uh, look at the fear there. So real. Felicity was originally going to be played by Emilia Pacquale from uh, uh, somewhere in Europe. Handsome woman. Wonderful knitter. But, uh, anyway, uh, she left the project uh, about a week before the shoot. Uh, I think it was a week. She'd been offered a, a film in Australia. Ah, big part. Big money. Couldn't say no. Turned out to be made up. <laughs> Absolute hoax. Didn't exist. Someone just faked it. Got her to fly out for no reason. Uh, by the time she found out, we, we'd already started with Nyssa. Who was something of a lucky find, has to be said. The day we heard from Amelia, Nessa had had an appointment in a different office in the same building, uh, can't remember what for, and just uh, stumbled into the wrong office, <laughs> by mistake. Jerome uh, liked the look of her, got her to read, and uh, a star was born. Uh, actually, no, obviously, because uh, she only did the one film, but you know what I mean. Never found out who made the hoax, incidentally, the hoax film. Then I found out. Always wondered. You all right, Dr. Smith? Ah, uh, yes, yes, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. It's just the chair. It's a little pointy. Anything you want to add? <laughs> Been a bit quiet? No, 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 you carry on. You're, you're doing marvellously. You do sort of need to speak. <laughs> Otherwise, there's not a massive amount of point of you being here. I'm just thinking. 
What about? Hmm? Oh, uh, the curse, as a matter of fact. Oh, well, you missed most of it, didn't you? Uh, you weren't on set till late in the shoot. All that had stopped by the time you arrived. A little after I arrived, technically. Actually, uh, you turning up. <laughs> that was strange. No one could remember hiring you. Ah, yes, you like see... Like you just walked in up the street. In fact, I don't remember you being hired for this commentary. Don't you? They said there was only enough money for three. I'm very cheap. The village. I made it. What did you say? Again, uh, this was the actual pub the landlady was supposed to have hired. So I was right. Oh, it isn't dead. Oh, what? What isn't dead? Oh, the rest, nursemaid. Oh, I knew it was too easy. What are you on about? I'm afraid that two of you are in very great danger indeed. What? Two of us? Well, which two? What happened to Jerome? Precisely. Are you, are you feeling all right? You said he died a month ago. How did he die? I don't know if this is really appropriate. Answer me! In his sleep. Why? He wasn't old. Oh, no one's exactly sure how... Are we how still old? recording? Look, he, he just sort of stopped. Stopped? Yeah. Does that remind you of anyone? Hmm? Does that sound familiar at all? No. No? Does it, Martin? Yes. Laura Price. Yes. Laura Price, on the props, 23 years old, died during the night when her body just stopped for no readily apparent reason. No one could ever figure out why. It's not the same thing, isn't is it? it? Or has the curse come back? There is no curse! Yes, but there is a cause. The absence of supernatural influences doesn't mean everything's totally unconnected. There was only enough money for three people today, you said. That's what they tell me. But Jerome was supposed to be here as well, wasn't he? If he hadn't died. Yes, but I don't see what So that... it's simple maths, Martin. One of you is his replacement. What? But which one? I've been booked for months. Oh, I've always been doing this. I'm Sir Jack Merivale. Yes. Well, you were hardly going to admit it, were you? What you on about? Admit what? One of you killed Jerome so that you could be here today. Just like you killed Laura. What? I've had enough of this. Uh, over there, in the booth. Can we start again, please? Can we start this again? Just the three of us. If you start this again without me, then two of you will be dead within 30 minutes. What? With me, you've got less than five. If I don't stop it. I'm calling the police. No, I don't think so. But that's my phone! You give me back my phone! You want to live, you will listen to me. What if I were to tell you, Miss Burke, that you were right? I was right. About what? About what was responsible for the missing scene. Aliens? I'm never right. Not aliens. One alien. One very nasty alien. Are you insane? In the 1800s, on the film set in 1976, and here today, the same one, every time. Martin, you wanted to know what affected the landlady, if it wasn't demons. Yes, but it... It, it was a rash. A particularly nasty kind of mind parasite from another dimension. I'm sorry? An energy being. More of a concept than a physical reality. This is ridiculous! They send out seeding devices through space, like... Dandelions in the wind, looking for somewhere to land, to fertilize. Round disks covered in symbols. Like the prop in the ceremony. Exactly, Martin, that's right. Exactly like the prop in the ceremony. Sooner or later, these devices find life. They're, they're picked up in space or land on inhabited planets, whatever. They find it. Or more accurately, it finds them. Before too long, some poor unfortunate locates one of these devices and touches it. And uh, then what? It plants a seed in their mind, a lone embryonic rash that's lived in the device in suspended animation for perhaps hundreds of years. Uh, I think I've gone mad. It grows, and it grows. It envelops and devours the host's mind, eating it away as nourishment, gaining strength as it dies. That's revolting! Slowly, bit by bit, it takes over the host body, possessing it entirely, becoming one. And then its purpose becomes to act as a nursemaid, birthing new rash in new minds. That's what all this is about. Is it? It's happened twice before, and it'll happen again today if I don't stop it. The landlady. Her husband was killed when the device fell from the sky. She must have been infected straight away. And then possess the other villagers. Rash technology operates through the combination of images and the spoken word. If a control phrase is said while someone looks at the symbols on the seeding device, a tunnel opens up in their mind and a rashed embryo floods in. That's how they propagate. 
That's what the ceremony was. Which we then repeated. Precisely. And I mean precisely. The first time it happened, this visiting professor was able to force the rash out of the villagers' minds. The nursemaid retreated into the seat device where it must have remained untouched for over a century, lost somewhere in the wilds of Norfolk. I couldn't find it at the time. You couldn't? Uh, he. Then, in 1976, someone found it. Someone new. Someone involved with the movies. They were possessed. And they put it in the film? In, in my film? What better way to disseminate their race into as many people as possible? Film the device, speak the control phrase over the footage, distribute it nationally, and you've got thousands of rashed waiting to be born. I thought it was Jerome. He made sense. He'd insisted on all the authentic locations, the props. He'd even provided the script. But the writer... Philip Monkston doesn't exist. I checked. It's a pseudonym. No wonder I never met him. Anyone who got in the way of using the real device and control phrase was dealt with. Laura. Laura, yes. And the script supervisor. All those other accidents. It couldn't have anyone changing things before filming began, could it? So... On the night you filmed the ceremony, the words were said while you looked at the device, and all of you were possessed by the rashed. What? There's one in my mind? Not anymore. I was able to drive them out. Your real minds returned, but obviously you had no memory of the events. Obviously? I destroyed the footage. You did? The footage, the seating device, the script pages, the soundtrack, anything to ensure the scene couldn't be replicated, even accidentally. And, uh, and the nursemaid? I thought it was dead. I was sure it was dead. Jerome seemed fine. I thought it had left him. But it wasn't in Jerome. No. I see that now. But if the footage was destroyed and the device was destroyed, why are you here today? Because I overlooked something. What? The final scene. The second ceremony? Chronologically later, but filmed earlier. Ah, yes, we shot that one first, because uh, during production we realized we were... I don't think we really need to know that at the moment, Martin. It had footage of the seeding device. I forgot I left it in. Say the control phrase over the final scene and you possess anyone who listens. You can't do it on the soundtrack anymore, but you can do it on this commentary. I thought it was dead. But what if I was wrong? What if it had just retreated, licking its wounds, reviving its strength? What if it realized it had one last chance to spread its spores across the planet? I had to be here. Just to see. It seems I made the right choice. So... What are you going to do? Do? Same as before. I've studied the rash technology, their language. Just as the right control phrase can birth one of their young, so it can burn an adult from our plane completely. Well, th th then say it. It destroys human minds too, Martin. I can only say it to the nursemaid. Otherwise, I kill the innocent. Is there no sign of her? Then you, you'd better find out which one of us it is. It's on the screen in a minute or two. We've not got much time. It's not that easy. It has to be someone who could have influenced Jerome into planting the props and buying the script. Someone with power over him. Like Martin. He's the director. He's all powerful. Or the star. Someone who could insist on script approval. Someone who'd lived in the area all his life and could easily have found the seeding device. Jack. You, you mean Jack? Sir Jack. Everything points to one of you two. You're the only ones who had the power. What? Well, it's not me. Or me. I've got a BAFTA. But that's just it, isn't it? You're too powerful, too important. The director and the star, why wouldn't you have been booked for the commentary? Um, so maybe it's a different sort of power. Maybe Jerome was held in a different way. What do you mean? Quite the ladies' man, our producer. Hope there are barmaids in heaven. Why are you looking at me like that? You've been remarkably quiet the last few minutes, Miss Burke. Did none of that make you want to ask a question? <laughs> I couldn't follow a word of it, sweetie. It has to be you. You're the only person who could possibly be a replacement for Jerome. Uh, now, that's just rude. You found the device. It took your mind. You wrote a script about the events in Beecham Well. I can barely string two words together. You've been hiding from me all along, pretending to be meek and quiet and inoffensive, not saying anything that might draw attention to yourself, anything relevant. I mean, would anyone really talk such inane nonsense all the time? Not heard many DVD commentaries, have you? You seduced Jerome. You got him to put your script in the film, the real props in the film, and just to make certain you cast yourself in the part. What better way to guarantee the phrase will be said than by saying it yourself? You are a very strange man. The game's up, I'm afraid. Martin, Sir Jack, cover your ears. Drakshola Mactensha. What are you doing? A new control phrase, one that can destroy you. 
Dracula McTinsa. This is mad. Alankra McTelsha. Are you two just going to sit there? Sambrala Tensola Thalancha and Tanbla. Oh, be, be careful. You dare use our language against us. Go on, please. Joe, 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 are you all right? Quiet, worm. This can't be happening. Draxola Maktinsha, Alankra Miktelsha. Keep talking, Doctor. Sambrala Tanshola Falancha and Tanbla. He's not doing anything. <laughs> the words are useless without the pictograms. Another miscalculation, Doctor. What? I think perhaps we could be in trouble. Trouble? In one minute, rash lava will enter your brain, and your entire consciousness will be food for our young. No trouble. I need to call my agent. You can't be planning on continuing this insane scheme. Who in their right mind will keep listening after this? You are still listening. You are still here. I concede the three of you. No. Let me stop. And next time, we will get it right. Listen here, you. I'm Sir Jack Miradale. Will you shut up, you pompous microbe, that I have had to sit through 20 minutes of your pointless posturing? How dare you? I said, shut up! There was no need for that. If my people did not have a use for his flesh, Jack would be dead. Please, in the booth, whoever you are, phone the police! Do you not understand? Nobody is getting in here. Nobody is getting out. Your soul is mine. Your life is mine. Look at the screen. Don't do it, Martin. Look at it. Uh, must, must look. Uh, you too, Doctor. Look at the screen. I, you have not uh, the will uh, to resist. Look at the screen. Twice before you have stopped me. It will not happen a third. Feel it. Feel it bore into your head. Feel your mind open and its fingers reach in. Relax and harp in tour. Kelpiton al tektach. Relax and harp in tour. Kelpiton al tektach. Relax and harp in tour. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. What? Or was it Klaatu Baradu Niktu? You know, I never can remember. Doctor. It doesn't work without the pictograms, you say. Interesting. You. I might not have been totally honest with you. Martin, Sir Jack, don't look at the screen. What have you done? Draxula Maktinsha. No. Alankra Miktinsha. I will not knock. No. No. Sambrala no. Tenshula Falancha Entanbra. And that's a wrap. It's over. What? what? And so Nissa, you can stop the film now. Nissa? Nissa Draken? She's in the booth. It's a long story. Um, what just happened? Oh, it's quite simple. I destroyed the rashed nursemaid. But why? Why? Martin, it's good to see you again. Oh, it's you. This is really you. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. You look so much more... Distinguished. Oh. Doctor, I don't understand. Why weren't Jack and I possessed? Well, I wasn't going to run the real footage. That would have been asking for troubles. I put together my own version of the film, one where I digitally replaced the rashed pictograms with a set of my own to destroy it. Wait, you doctored the footage? In a manner of speaking. Poor Joanna. Yes, she must have had her entire consciousness eaten away decades ago. I wonder how anyone could tell the difference. Jack. Sir Jack. Can someone call me an ambulance? Nessa, we need to gather up all the tapes, including the commentary. Yes, of course. They're too dangerous to leave behind. We need to take them and destroy them. We'd better be off, then. Absolutely. Well, you're, you, you, are you going? Well, you don't need me. You were doing fine without me. Riveting stuff. No, but it... it's not like you needed an historical advisor. <laughs> it wasn't that accurate. Visiting professor. <laughs> I ask you. <laughs> uh, doctor? Doctor? Do you know what this means, Martin? What? I think we're going to have to do it all again.
Nissa, wake up. Nissa! <gasps> Doctor? Where, where are we? I haven't the faintest idea. I only just came to myself. How did we get here? I can't remember. Doctor, I can't remember! I try not to worry. It's so dark, I can't see a thing. Perhaps I forgot to pay the electricity bill. <laughs> How do you feel? Scared. Like I can't breathe properly. You? Let's just stay calm and take this one step at a time, shall we? Take my hand and see if we can't get up. Oh, my arms and legs ache. Oh, mine too. Well, this seems to be a rather confined... Ow! What was that? Doctor? Logs. I think we're in a woodshed. I want to get out of here, but I'm afraid to leave. What's wrong with me? As I said, Nessa, slow down. Stay calm. Something has jangled our nerves, but everything's fine. Yeah, here we are. A wall. Hey, you go in that direction, we'll soon locate the door. Either that or we'll bash our heads together. Doctor, don't you feel it? This terrible sense of panic. Nessa, please! Focus. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to raise my voice. Just breathe deeply. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Better? Much. I wish I knew how we got here. I can't even remember where we are in time and space, I mean. No, neither can I. But I'm sure the information won't evade us forever. In the meantime, we have to find that door. Got it! Oh, locked! Now, there's a surprise. It's a wooden door, so... Uh, stand back, mess up! Hmm. Barely any brighter out here, I'm afraid. Tall trees, precious little moon. And this mist really isn't helping. My eyes are still adjusting. Where are you? I'm right here. Doctor, can I keep hold of your hand? I don't know why, but... Yeah. To be perfectly honest, it'll help steady my hand. Well, anyway. I'm starting to make out trees and stars. Anything we can navigate by. Hard to navigate when you don't know your destination. The TARDIS could be anywhere. <gasps> what was that? Doctor, what was that? Quiet, Miss, quiet and still. So hard to see through the mist. The sound came from over there. Let's listen for a moment. Doctor. There's something in the mist. Yes, I see it too. A shadow. No, two shadows. They're not moving, but they're looking straight at us. I can feel it. Nissa, you're hurting my hand. You're hurting mine. Did you hear that? I only tend to say run when there's a clear and present danger, but... They're getting closer. Run! <gasps> really should play more cricket, Miss. Stop! Can we afford to stop? Whatever it is, is still behind us, I'm sure. Whatever it is, I can't believe we're running from it without good reason. Doctor. What is it? Up there, hanging from the tree. Ah, it, it's nothing, Nissa, just a length of rope. It's more than that, Doctor. It's a noose. The best we don't dwell. Look, over there. What is it? It's a cottage. And what appears to be the edge of a village looks rather smart. What, with just one floor? Size isn't everything, Nissa. Just ask the TARDIS when we relocate it. But perhaps we could shelter there till daylight, when we might be more composed. We don't know who lives inside. Nissa, we have to fight this sense of fear. We seem to be experiencing the same sense of, well, panic. So you do feel it? It must be artificially induced. It must. We have to bear that in mind and get to that cottage as quickly as possible. Come on. Wait for me. See how they run. There is no need to pursue them further. They must recharge. Hello? Hello? Anyone home? Doctor, I can see those shadows again at the edge of the clearing. They're watching us. Hello? Hold your heart, sir. Of course. Sorry if we've woken you. Oh, heavens! You're fine. 
faces. Have you the devil on your tails? I sincerely hope not. I'm, I'm the doctor. This is Nessa. We appear to have lost our way in the dark, and, and we were wondering... Please, will you let us in? Don't want no trouble here. Will I be needing this? Hi. I, I can assure you there's no call for a flintlock or any other weapon. In you come, then. We're very grateful to you, Mrs... Uh... Miss Emily Carbon, sir. Please, would you mind securing the door? Very well. Now then, what have we got here? My, but your clothes are queer. You live alone, Miss Cobham. I soon will, sir. Aye, but I will. Can I offer you some partage? Oh, that's kind. Thank you, but I'm afraid I'm not hungry. What did you mean, Emily, when you said... To... I'll heat it up. Vegetables to go with it. Ivy and I have lived the life since our mistress passed away, God rest her soul. Oh, you were servants and now... Uh... Left her and the master's cottage to us old maids. Imagine. The locals didn't like it. Have you seen the rope outside? The news? Aye. Pay it no mind. Been there since Hopkins were around 20 years back. Hopkins? I think Miss Cobham is referring to Matthew Hopkins, am I right? Aye. The witch finder general himself. And now I know where we are. Suffolk, 1665. You were very trusting to let us in. Could hardly say no. I saw the fear on your faces. Yes, thank you. We're, we're, we're stabilising now. Then why look out the window? Eyes so wide. Curiosity. We thought we saw people out there in the mist. Some say Hopkins and his man, John Stern, are still at large in the countryside. Eyes full of God's fury, gliding through the mist in the dead of the night, still hunting those with the devil in their hearts. Sorry, ma'am. Did I scare thee? I'm just a little cold, that's all. It's an improbable tale at best. Here, have a blanket round your shoulders. Stew's almost done. Where's your friend Ivy tonight? Ivy is my sister, sir, my twin. Why God chooses to make me live longer, I can't say I know. Oh, you mean Ivy's... Barely there, ma'am. Too weak to leave the bedroom. May not last the night. I'm sorry. No need. We've lived long in Red Lodge. Fifty year. A miracle for maids like us. Red Lodge? So that's where we are. Is that the name of the cottage? As I recall, Red Lodge is the name of the village. Emily, might I see your sister? There may be something I can do. Won't hear of it. Uh, Sit yourselves down. Please. Eat. It... Please, it'd be no trouble. Eat, sir. Very well, Emily, but I, I won't give up. Fire's burning low in the grate. Best fetch some wood. Please, be careful. Doctor, do you think she's safe out there? Fire. What? Fire. The fire, wheels turning, bells ringing. Missa, do you remember? We were talking about fire. We just stepped out of the TARDIS and we were talking about fire. The great fire of London, to be precise. It's 1665, Nissa. A whole year yet before Pudding Lane. Do keep up. Do we really have to explore every time we land somewhere unintended? He who never explores, Nissa, will never truly find himself. Who said that? Me, just then. I think that's rather good, actually. <laughs> Look, sunset. Isn't that worth leaving the old box for? If you say so, Doctor. Doctor, it's all coming back. As we looked at that sunset... Yes, we were ambushed. What was that? Ah! It was all a blur, but something struck the back of my neck. Something with a texture of warm clay. And then that terrible hum. Doctor, there's something on me. I can't move. Me too. Stay calm, Nissa. Just stay calm. What are they doing, Doctor? Make them stop. Please make them stop. I can't remember anything else until the woodshed. I don't think I want to, but I'm feeling a little stronger. Whatever happened to us must have induced both the fear and the memory loss, but both are fading. Nissa, 
Take a look at Ivy, would you? Let me know if anything can be done for her. Of course. Where are you going? To make sure Emily's all right with that wood. Hungry now. So very, very hungry. Fifty percent is frustrating. I feel it too. The pain of the incomplete. When can we fulfill the great becoming? Now. Now we feed. Stay away. My name is Nissa. I've come to see if I can help. What is the nature of your illness? Nissa, ma'am? Where might a name like that be from? Oh, a long way away. Foreign lands, eh? I never seen them. I, I never will. You don't know that for sure. I always like the sound of France, but <laughs> it might as well be the moon. Still, a good life, yes, good enough for Ivy Cobber. You've a kind face, ma'am. Come closer. It must be a great comfort that you and Emily are still living together. What's that you say, ma'am? You and Emily. I just mean some sisters might have gone their separate ways by now. I, I don't know no Emily, ma'am, and I never had a sister. But she's your twin. My twin? Uh, no, ma'am, don't say that. I thought they were just bad dreams. What dreams? One of those dreams where you can't move and there were demons. Terrible demons. So calm, raking their fingers through my mind. What was that? Something. Someone at the window. It's windy outside. I'm sure it was just a branch. But... But there's no tree past the glass. <gasps> Please! No! Stay away from the curtains. I've had enough of being afraid. My nerves can't take it. Please, don't open. I'm sorry. Oh, there is! There is someone! By all the saints! Who is it? It's... It's me! There, sir. Now the fire will last all night. Improbable. I assure you, will. No, Emily, you call the Hopkins and Stern ghost stories improbable. Where did you learn a word like that? I mean, I find it a touch improbable that you would use it, not because you lack the intelligence to employ it, but because it sits badly in your mouth. Almost as if someone else was saying it, someone else letting themselves slip. Pardon me, sir. Ma'am. This is a devil come to trick us, or worse. She looks all burned, but she has your eyes. No, she's half me, almost as if she's half developed. Get away from that window, ma'am. Hello? What do you want? I beg that you get away. Oh, don't pay any attention to me, Emily. Perhaps it's just the paranoia I've experienced. But then there's the small matter of the plague. The plague? It's rampant in London right now and spreading further afield. It's one thing to let strangers in because they sound afraid. Quite another to risk them bringing bubonic plague into your house. Wouldn't you say? Emily? Nissa! 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 The young woman has been taken. Taken? Taken where? To a place where we can feed without interference. I warn you now, if any harm befalls her... There is no if. The probability is 100%. Probability? I take it this is Ivy. Oh, no pulse. Ivy is now an empty vessel. She has served her purpose. This woman wasn't your twin, was she? She was the original on which you modelled yourself. Correct. It takes two full charges to duplicate a human. Charges? You think of humans as 
as batteries. The first charge allows duplication to begin. Each template must be allowed to recover before we take the second. I assume that's why we were locked up in the woodshed. You recovered from the first charge sooner than expected. So there are half-formed versions of Nissa and I walking around out there. Well, this is all very informative, but I have to find the original Nissa. So if you'll excuse me... Oh. You were incorrect to say that this weapon would be unnecessary. Please, just let me go. 98% of your body is now paralyzed. Escape is impossible unless you roll down the bank into the water. I shall not allow this to happen. What are you doing to me? Draining you of your life force. Assimilating your genetic data. Adopting your identity. The first charge gave us your basic body structure. And now you're taking my mind. Correct. Our invasion will require stealth. It is necessary for us to adopt both the outward appearance of humankind and its internal characteristics. And what happens to me after this? Precisely what happened to the human. Ivy. I don't suppose you'll pay any mind to the humble suggestion that you pack up and head home. The Spearer will never retreat. Please stand by the fire where I can see you. Tell me, why did you invent an Emily when we arrived? I I'm guessing you drew upon poor Ivy's memories, perhaps memories of how she behaved when she had visitors before, but why bother? You could have just paralysed us and got it over with. Bide in time. Controlling you. Waiting for you to recharge. We have discovered that 100% of humans cannot recharge when immobilised. Remarkably fond of figures, aren't you? Numbers yield precision. Precision yields results. Which mean nothing compared to respecting life. You respect life in all its forms? I do. Well, unless you happen to have a nice talk and a habit of exterminating galaxies. The Spearer do not. This world will be sufficient for us to flourish. Therefore, you must respect us and our intention to assimilate the entire population. Logically, that should be true. In reality, however, I'm going to walk out of the front door. Goodbye. Stop! I will use this device. No. No. You won't kill me. There's nothing like death to bring about a 100% energy loss. And with me dead, you won't be able to finish the process of... Assimilating me. Oh. Hello. My clone self, I presume. You are my template. When assimilation is complete... I will be indistinguishable from you. Apart from the fact that I'll be dead. Surrender yourself to the great becoming, Doctor. Thanks awfully, but I rather think I'll resist it instead. Stand aside, Doctor. Your failure to resist the first charge was precisely 100%. I have a rule never to be paralyzed twice in one day. So I'm afraid I must be off. This door is the only way out. You're forgetting the broken window in Ivy's room. Goodbye. After him. Assimilation 72% complete. Please, stop! It is too late. Your mind is opening up to me. Your memories. I will fight this with everything I have. I feel... I feel the sun on my skin. What? I play in the endless gardens. Warm seasons seem to last forever. You're inside my mind. Sunrise and sunset. My favorite times of the day. When my father is home... Don't you dare speak of him! When my father is home, we sit together in the grove. We watch the sun. I am happy. Stop this! I study and achieve. Father's face so proud. One day he disappears forever. So does my world. Now I have a new home. A new... Get home. out of my head! Assimilation 79% complete. No. Take your hand off her neck and step away. Doctor, what's the matter? Oh, don't be ridiculous. You're still not fully formed. Anyone can see who the real Nissa is. Take your hand away. Doctor, you're scaring me. And you're underestimating the momentum generated by a well-placed self. No! Good timing. If you say so. Struck me as rather last minute. Let's carry you back to the TARDIS, shall we? How deep is the river? One way to find out. We need to regroup and find a way to stop the Spearer. There shall be no escape. Daughter, the other me. She's coming after us. Never look back, Nissa. It's always worked for me. 
Uh, there. I can move faster and dry land. Just have to keep going and... Oh. Doctor, there's more of them. They're all around us. Yes. The villagers of Red Lodge, I presume. What made you think you were different from the other 98% of humans in this experimental area? Bring them back to Red Lodge. We shall end this on the village green. Miss, I'm really very sorry about all this. It's not your fault, Doctor. It's always my fault. My brethren, abandon your positions and gather round. The first stage of the invasion of our new home planet reaches its conclusion. Please, just let us go. Death shall be your freedom. Your spirit twins will now enjoy their final feat, that they may become whole. This time we will not be interrupted. Stay back, please. Assimilating now. Assimilating now. Soon I shall access the memory stream. Ah. So, experimental area. This is a, a test run for the full invasion. Correct. With you and the girl, we now have 100 human test conversions. Doctor, they still think we're human. So, one of us is the hundredth. Surely we should win a prize. No? Still, it's all about the taking part. Silence, fool. The doctor is definitely more foolish than the average human. Your experimental findings should back that up. What do you mean? Yes, Nissa, whatever do you mean? Just that the average human lacks extreme failings. Mentally, they are neither too foolish nor too clever for their own good. Physically, neither weak nor muscle-bound. Are you going anywhere in particular with this? Be quiet. Gaining access to memory store. Kindly stop referring to my brain as a memory store. Emily, if you had any kind of worthwhile army, it would replicate the average human paradigm. It would merge the strengths of each gender. Thankfully, that's beyond your pathetic capability. How wrong you are. The mighty Spira can utilize its gathered data however it chooses. Silence, my brethren. Let us show them before they die. We shall collate our findings and adopt the statistically average human form. Nissa, why are you helping them? Because my heart's in the right place, just like yours. We shall now transform. Ah. Emily, this mightn't be such a good idea. Spare us your reverse psychology, Doctor. Your friend's loose tongue will aid our triumph over humanity. It really won't. Please, there's still a chance. That is enough. I am inside the Doctor's memory store. Wait, there is something wrong. Cease assimilation, both of you. Their minds can wait. We have their bodies. The rest of you, link hands, re-assimilate. Regress to the human mean. You see, Doctor, look now upon the Earth's new human race, genderless and statistically optimized. Oh, Emily, if you'd only gone home like a good spear. In my chest! In all your chests. The Doctor has two hearts, but you've counted him as one person. 101 divided by 100 means that you each have an extra point, not one of a heart. That on a whole variety of other non-human glitches in your new biology. What? All of which adds up to a series of fatal anomalies, I'm afraid. We must transform again! Doctor, why are your eyes closed? Are you all right? I just can't watch. I just wriggled my fingers. I'm sure of it. Yes. The paralysis is wearing off. I have that terrible dread feeling again. Yes, but this time we know why we feel it. The biggest fear lies in not knowing why you're afraid. Finally, some daylight. Feels like it's been dark forever. Look, you can...
can see the horizon. I might appreciate it more if we weren't surrounded by the dissolving residue of Spira. Doctor, they would have killed us without a second thought. You should be grateful they've gone. I take no pleasure from winning a battle in this way, Nessa. Gratitude for the death of others soon chews through the soul. However, I must admit your idea was technically inspired. You knew the Spira would be meticulous with their calculations. I'm glad they weren't meticulous enough to notice that you have two hearts, or that neither of us is from Earth. The Spira saw the human brain as a box of facts, paying no attention to the connective tissue which truly makes someone alive. It's unsurprising that they might overlook matters of the heart and home. Right. Time to sit up. Oh. Yes, that's the stuff. Now, time to locate the TARDIS. Doctor, can we stay a minute longer to see the full sunrise, please? Yes. If you'd like to. Of course. Is everything all right? It's just that for some time now I haven't really allowed myself to think about Traken. About my father. But the spirit in my mind brought everything back. Ah. Oh. They were good memories, Doctor. Happy memories. They haven't been so happy in a long time. Well, things always brighten, given time. Yes. Look at all that golden sunlight coming up over the horizon. It's so very beautiful. Yes. Yes, I suppose it is. And when you think about it, there's no hurry, is there? No hurry at all. What's behind them? Concordum is a repository for the most heavenly music, all the way back to the dawn of time. An MP3 player on a planetary scale. Ah, just what we need. What? A display panel, access to the archives. Uh, here we go. Subchamber F59, neoclassical wing. That's half a mile east, three levels up. Come on! of vaults like this covering the entire planet. Very nice, too. But I thought we were going to see the Terraleptus Event Horizon. The most magnificent sunset in this part of space-time, you said. Look, we're here. Subchamber F-59. So? Read the plaque. I still don't... Oh. Plane or space curves and surfaces consisting of parts similar to the whole. Chamber music by Kremesis, court composer to the inaugural console of the Traken Union. Lots of lutes. Can't say I care much for lutes. My father loved this piece. He used to play it for my stepmother when she was low. However, did you know? I... well, I just thought... You knew I'd been thinking about Traken. You came here for me. And you so wanted to see that horizon before it folded. Well, we can always go another day. Not quite the same, is it, when it's not live? 
Now you're going to sit through a whole truck and geometrical sonata instead. Actually, I was thinking I might have a wander around while you listen. Trachan was in many ways a wise and admirable culture, but like I say, lutes aren't really my thing. All the same, Doctor. It's very sweet of you. Yes, well, I'll just open the door. Please don't call me sweet again. No! Not that chamber! It's not safe! Please, don't! <laughs> Doctor! Stay out of the door! Don't stand in its way! <laughs> it's all right. I've got it. Doctor, what happened? I'm not entirely sure. You must be the archivist. Naloom, curator of the Western Spiral Collection. I started as a junior on the sub-levels, you know, cataloging downloads. Just goes to show you that... Yes, jolly interesting. What was that noise? Uh, th there was a girl. Uh, she released it. Now it's spreading through the collection, destroying so many priceless harmonies. What is it? An oral virus? Every sounds viral when you think about it. Expanding outwards, transferring vibration from particle to particle, except... Except for what? Well, except for... Primal sonics, but they're just a theory. I've seen that terrible sound rend flesh and bone. If you'd have taken the blast directly... Yes, I... but I keep hearing bells. That can't be good. Can I access the data call from here? Yes, but... This shouldn't take long. What's he doing? He's tracing the infection back to its source. Here it is. Ground Zero. One single recording within the collection, White Wave Soft Haze, composed on Earth in the late 1960s by one Jeff Cooper. Genre, progressive rock. What's that? Again, not really my thing. If I may elaborate... Please do. Jeffrey Belvedere Cooper, born 1941, was a reclusive guitarist working in the progressive rock field. Known to aficionados as the Coop, his quartet achieved notoriety on the club circuit through a short composition entitled You Can See My Pad, Doll, which I believe was banned by the British Broadcasting Corporation. Would you like to hear it? Yes, please. Absolutely not. Suit yourself. Uh, after a brief solo career, Mr. Cooper vanished without trace before completing his final composition, a psychedelic suite entitled White Waves, Soft Haze. Never released. That's impressive. Nissa, TARDIS, now! I'm an archivist, young lady. This is my archive. You are preparing dinner. Blimey! Oh, my beating heart. Do you have to sneak around like that, girl? You nearly did for me there. I've told you before to stay out of my kitchen. You are preparing dinner for your master. He is not my master. He pays my wages, that's all. Not the same thing. He sent me to tell you. Mr. Cooper will not require dinner today. He is busy in the studio. He will be there until the music is complete. Oh, is that so? Well, why doesn't he tell me himself? He is busy in, the, in studio. the studio. Yes, I heard you the first time. Well, as it happens, this is my dinner, not his. When was the last time he ate his greens, anyway? I will tell him you understand. He is not to be disturbed. Now, would you tell him what you like, girl? Trump. Nineteen sixty-eight, the country estate of Geoffrey Cooper, rock icon. Oh, nice place. Do you think so? Seems a little ostentatious for any one man. This from a homeowner who doesn't even know how many rooms he's got. Mm. Quiet, isn't it? The rich like their privacy. They like their isolation. But this isn't quiet like tranquility. It's quiet like death. No birds, no animals, just the breeze. Hey. You two! What do you want? And a rather angry-looking woman. She's coming over. Let me handle this. Hmm. Be my guest. This is private land. Didn't you see the signs? Although I suppose you pair are used to breaking into places you've no right to be. 
Look at you in your King's Road rags and your... your... Is that a vegetable you're wearing? It's decorative. Uh, we're, we're here to see Mr Cooper. Perhaps you could let him know we've arrived. We're um, uh, friends of his. Uh, musicians. You don't fool me, Sonny. None of his musician friends call him Mr Cooper. It's all cat this and dude that. Now, if you don't scarper, I'm calling He's a... not a musician. Just wishes he was. And who might you be? Met the Coop in a club. Asked me back to see his paddy did. Couldn't shake this cat once I'd told him. The Coop's his idol. Oh, I see. You're a groupie. What's that? <clears throat> Never mind. Uh, so, can we see him then, the, uh, the Coop? He's in his studio. He's not to be disturbed. Well, we'll just... Hang out here till he's free, if that's all right. If the coop don't like it, he can tell us to scarper himself, right, doll? Doll? Oh, suit yourselves. You stay in the kitchen, mind what I can keep an eye on you. I tell you this, though, I don't approve. You could at least stick to one girl at a time. I'm seeing a whole new side of you today. Come on. Funny about the birds. Here we are, then. Warm and wet. Thank you for the tea, Mrs Maloney. It's most welcome. That's quite all right, love. Nice to see you've not lost your manners along with your morals. <laughs> Sorry? <coughs> that uh, bowl by the fridge, Mrs M, have you a dog? Mm, Aberdon. Mr Cooper dotes on him. I ain't seen him since yesterday, mind. It's a big estate. But still, it's not like Aberdon to Mrs Food. Not like him at all. No birds. No dog. Mind you. His master's the same. I'm supposed to be his cook, but he hasn't eaten a proper meal in weeks. Marmite and biscuits, that's all he'll touch. Another use nor ornament these days. He's in that studio all of the time, day and night, ever since he what met that girl. What do you make of his music, Mrs M? Oh, his old stuff's not so bad. When he was with the band. All that banging's not really my cup of tea, but I suppose it's all right for you young'uns. I um, prefer his more recent material. Have you heard his latest... White Waves Soft Haze. Oh, is that what it's called? <laughs> Silly blooming name. No, he hasn't let me hear it. Hasn't let anyone hear it, except that girl. What girl? Uh, Elisa? Erisa? I don't know, something foreign. She's there with him now in the studio. Oh? Now there's a madam without any manners. Not like you, love. Perhaps, uh, perhaps I should take you over. After all, you were invited. That'll put Her Majesty's nose right out of joint. Well, if you're sure, it won't be any trouble. Ah, of course not, love. Come on, drink up. Step lively. <laughs> Mr Cooper's studio is in the cellar. Watch out for the mice. You have mice? Whole house is riddled with them. Nasty beggars. But have you seen any recently? In the last few days? Now that you mention it, no. Ah, good riddance to them. <laughs> Doctor, the animals, why would they all disappear? I'm not sure. Well, here we are then. Ah, the studio. In you go. Hmm. Now, this is the mixing desk. Studio proper's through the glass, see? Oh, he's turned the lights out. Why? Like I say, you're a nice girl. Oh, look at this. A lute. Marvellous. I thought you didn't like lutes. When did I say that? Back on Concordum, subchamber F59. Oh, well, ah, this one's marvellous. <laughs> Mrs M, where is Mr... Um, where's the coop, I mean? Oh, he'll be in there somewhere. If he's recording, why can't we hear anything? No music. No, you wouldn't out here, love. It's soundproofed. But you see that light above the door? It means Mr Cooper ain't in a session just now. So we can go in? Better knock first, just to be safe. No answer. Perhaps we should just oh, wait. Oh, there she is, skulking behind the glass. Yes, yes, love, you, you, love, you've got visitors, love. She can see you, but she's not paying any attention. Just standing there like a statue. Oh, so rude. Foreign, I told you. They're all the same. No, no, no. It's as if she's listening to something. What did you say her name was again? Out of the way. Look, I'll give her what for. Oi! 
You in there, I know you can hear me. Did you see that, Nissa, on the floor of the studio? Looks like rags. A pile of rags. And the glass is vibrating. Right, that's it. I'm going in. I won't stand for Lady Muck treating this place like she owns it. Vibrating? What does that mean? It means... Oh, Mrs. M, no! Don't open the door! Doctor, she's disintegrating! Every living atom torn apart just a pile of clothes left. Like Jeff and Cooper in the studio. Fingers and ears, Nessa, and stay away from the doorway. If the sound wave hits you directly, you're dead. The woman, the girl, how come she's still alive? Not now, Nessa. Back up the stairs. Run! Doctor, that noise, it's turning me inside out. Up here. Once you're through, we can seal the cellar. Uh, oh, we made it. We're safe. We're not safe. No one's safe. The sound is just a medium. It's what's in the sound that kills primal sonics. Primal sonics? But you said... I know what I said. Those are quantum sounds out there. The roar of the universe's birth before it was silenced by nucleosynthesis. The music of the spheres. But what if those earlier sounds still survive somewhere else? What if someone brought them back? The vault. Hold it. Don't let her through. Why don't you hold it? I'm busy. Arisi, can you hear me, Arisi? I hear you. I know what you are, Rissy. What you're doing? My sisters and I danced before the stars were born. You would have thought us beautiful. I sincerely doubt that. As your universe grew gold, we found new homes. Where entropy reigned, we were content. Then, we fell, fell so fell. I'm begging you, Arissi, stop this! Destroy the recording before it's too late! The sound of creation! The scream that birthed my race before the first hydrogen atoms combined! Raging flesh, shattering songs! Only my sisters and I will survive its roar! Doctor! The door! I can't hold it! Here! Oh! It's alright. Uh, I think she's gone. Gone? But where? Concordum. I heard her laughter when I opened subchamber F-59. She was there, inside the music. You knew her name? Not her name. Her race. Arissi. Entropy sirens. Then you've met them before? Of course not. No one has. The entropy sirens can't live in our reality, not since the first stars formed. They disappeared. Now one of them is back. Without chaos to feed on, she knew she'd die. So she found Jeff Cooper. She became his muse, directed him to compose White Wave Soft Haze and infiltrated a copy into Concordum's vaults. The archivist Nalum, he said something about a girl. In time, all of Concordum will be infected. Every last piece of music on that whole precious planet. Quantum particles of sound. An atmosphere where she can survive. The thing is, it won't end with Concordum. The sound's been leaking from the cellar here for days. The animals felt it. They're more sensitive to the primitive universe, but it was just a trace, hardly even noticeable. And now primal sonics are abroad on Earth. They'll multiply, replacing every sound, every clamor, clap and crash. Building like a... like a feedback loop. Until they fill the world. Then it's just as well it's shut up in the cellar. Sound can't open doors. It doesn't need to. But when it can shake the house apart... What was that? It's getting out. We'll never make it back to the TARDIS unless... Unless what? Doctor? Mouse traps. Mouse traps? This place is infested. That's what Mrs. Maloney said. Look for mouse traps. Under the sink in the pantry. Why mouse traps? Mouse traps have cheese in. It'll shield our ears from the sun. You expect me to put cheese in my ears? Well, have you got a better idea? Ow! There's one here, too. Now, quick, rock your ears before... Plotting a course, what does it look like? But we can't leave. The Arisi's entropy composition is spreading from the house. It'll cover the whole planet. We can't abandon Earth to be annihilated. What did you say? Take the cheese out of your ears. You might be able to hear me better. I said we can't leave Earth to be annihilated. Not that. I know that. What did you say in the kitchen about the noise? A uh, building. Uh, primal sonics? Quantum particles? Feedback loop? Feedback loop! That was it, Nissa. You're magnificent. 
Good. Would you care to explain why? The Eurysi is clever, but she's missed something. She had Jeff Cooper compose White Wave Soft Haze here on Earth in 1968, then she took a copy to infect the archive on Concordum. How? Travelling at the speed of sound, obviously, but the point is her entropy composition exists simultaneously at two distinct points in time and space. I suggested that to you. Like I say, magnificent. <laughs> Now that unholy sound is spreading exponentially, consuming concordum. The entire subcontinent of romantic laments has gone already. Don't worry. The doctor has a plan. Which is? Uh, that's it. Chronospatial antenna aligned to Earth, 1968, scanning for signal. We should be getting reception any time. Now! No! That's that sound! That composition! Receiving it loud and clear. Now, set amplification to maximum, Nissa. Amplification at maximum. You're broadcasting it to the whole of Concordum. Down. There's no need to do this, sir. Now get him off me. If you'd only take the time to explain to people what it is you're doing, this sort of thing wouldn't happen. Doors, please, Nissa. Listen, Naloom. Do you hear that? The sound. It's gone. The music was growing through constructive interference, note after note, building and amplifying a feedback loop. Rather ironic. The song of the entropy siren sustained by the perfectly synchronized structure at its heart. But by broadcasting a second copy of the composition, just a fraction out of sync, constructive interference became destructive interference. Two waves of sound, one here and one from 1968, cancelling one another out. Concordum and Earth, both safe. But so much was lost. Such priceless, irreplaceable works. Oh, nothing's irreplaceable. It's all still out there somewhere. Nissa, did I ever take you to see Benny Goodman at the Palomar Ballroom? Benny Goodman? The King of Swing, born 1909, died 1986, the son of a Warsaw Yes, Chris. well, none of that actually matters, does it? What matters is hearing the music. Ooh. If, if, if you'll excuse me, 
I have work to do. So much silence to fill. Goodbye, Doctor. Nissa. We could stay a while longer, Nissa, if you want. The sonata my father loved was infected. It's gone. There's plenty more track and chamber music in the archives. You were going to say, unfortunately. No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. Anyway, I've had enough of music for a while. Let's watch the Terraleptus event horizon fold instead. Come on. The entropy siren. What happened to her, do you think? Arissi. Yes, I'm afraid the silence almost certainly killed her. Like pulling the air from her lung. Doctor? 